Hey, I'm William Baca and this is Ravenhawk Tech. In this video, I'm going to be covering some initial preparations for converting a Hyper-V VM into Proxbox. A couple things um, setting up here in 5.2. I have used my custom uh, 5, I think it was a 5.0 or 4.2. I think it was actually a 4.2 image um, which of course was already configured up with my storage options and everything if you've seen in my last video there was a local uh, lvm drive here but just wanted to cover some preemptive things that you need to do um you don't need to remove it like i did but you know you can if you want to so if you click on the data center tab and you go to the storage yeah you go to storage options here you would see the local dash LVM and then local. So I've removed my local LVM. I'm not going to use that for the time being. And I do have my local storage here. Now I've already made the changes to mine, but I'm going to walk you through what I did. So hit edit. And then on the tab here, first thing you're going to get an error here saying max backup and needs you to set a number or whatever. Uh, drop down the content here. Cats. Drop down the content here, and I just took out the VZ dump backup file because I'm not going to be doing that. And I added container to the mix here. So it has the option to do disk image, ISO, container templates, and containers. And I just hit OK. Once that is done, you'll notice that when you actually go into create a VM, you'll actually have the option of choosing the type of dri uh, drive it's going to create. So I'm going to say here, I'm not going to actually put a disk in this one. Choose here. And then of course, now you can suddenly have the option to do the VMware image, the Q uh, QEM image format or QCAL, raw disk image, things like that. So now you'll have this ability to do these options, which you didn't before. Originally, it would just create an LVM thin provisioned disk. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create a VM. I'm going to call it test01, which matches my VM here that's currently running. I am going to go ahead and say that the OS, I'm not going to use a drive here. Uh, the OS is Linux because it's the CentOS box. Uh, I'm going to choose and do, because I only did a 10 gig hard drive, I'm going to say 10 gig. I'm going to leave it as a QCAL. Um, some people pronounce it differently. I just call it a QCAL because it sounds funny. <laughs> uh, my original machine is, and you, this is important when you're moving it, I'm using an IDE controller. And right now the bus logic is iSCSI. So I'm going to change it to IDE so that way it maintains the same. For VMs, yes, there can be some performance increase, but I mean, generally the bus logic officially doesn't matter unless you have specific needs so i'm gonna leave the storage as local 10 gig sive the qcow image and it's an ide on ide zero um my cpu count really doesn't matter in this procedure but i'm going to just say two and i'm going to leave it as 512 and i don't really need a network device for this one at the time being so i'm just going to say no network device and then continue all right, once that's done, you'll now see that I have a VM here, once it's done populating, called 100, which is also in parentheses, test01. Uh, I'm gonna try to power it up. You'll see it says start, here's the machine. I'll go into console, which of course I've been have a block up, block. I've had a pop-up blocked, hit done. All right, so. Always allow console. There's my console. And you'll notice that there is no OS here at all. All right. I just wanted to prove that as a point of saying, yep, there is definitely nothing here. And what we're going to do here is going to actually be a direct translation. All right. So the best course of action, if you can do it, uh, depending on how you have permissions and everything set up, is to do a direct export. Now, unless you actually have everything configured properly, you're going to do this, you're going to make the change, hit select, hit, hit export, and you're going to basically get fail to create export directory. Um, 
you're going to get a general access denied error. You're going to have to make permission changes and so forth. What I like to do, even though that is, of course, the, the best course of action, just to make sure you get a clean snapshot and image, is as long as your VM is consolidated, and you don't have any issues there, we're just going to need the disk for this translation. So I'm just going to use FileZilla. FileZilla is a great little FTP client that you can use to just connect to uh, your regular FTP server, your SF, uh, SFTP server, or uh, other transfer options on that. Um, I want to say that there's one other type that it can do, and I, I just don't remember off the top of my head. So anyway, I put in the path to my actual server, and I got to the directory where I can get to the test drive, which is, of course, located in C drive, users, public, documents, Hyper-V, virtual disks. Nice long path. you got to love that. And we're going to be moving it, in this case, to var, lib, bz, images, and then the actual folder name for this, um, the virtual machine we're using. In this case, it's ID 100, so the ID is going to be 100. So I'm going to say for this one, the test01.vhdx, and I'm going to tell it to upload. And I'm just going to put it as a high priority. It's a small uh, disk, so it shouldn't really take too long to upload. All right, the disk is uploaded. What we're going to do now is go ahead and open a PuTTY session to our Proxmox machine. And we're just going to jump down to the var lib vz directory and go to images. Here we go. All right, now I have in the text file here what we're going to do is we're going to do a QEUM-IMG check to make sure that this drive is perfectly good. And there are no er uh, errors found on the image, so we're no problem there. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to do the same program, do a convert, and I'm going to actually tell it to go to QCOW2 format. I'm going to tell it this VHDX is going to be replacing this image right here. And I'm going to be adding these commands down into the description, of course. So I'm going to tell it to do that. Hit enter. Let it do its thing. You'll notice if you come back here, you can kind of get an idea about that. So you can see where the drive is actually changing. So let's check back to here. It is actually already done. And you'll see that there was a size difference. It was very quick, but a very quick size difference there. All right. Let's start up this machine. Okay, we get the status of OK. Let's see if it actually powers. There we go. And we're going to come back to a console session here. Let's see. Booting from hard drive. Now, if all goes well, we'll say that, we should be able to boot straight into, there's my Linux. All right. Let's make sure it fully boots in. Obviously, we do not have much in this uh, particular Linux because I have it being a CentOS uh, minimal. So not much that I can show you to make sure that everything is moved and migrated and stuff. There's going to be some things that you may end up having to change depending on your OS that you choose. Um, ghost drivers, uh, reconfiguring, the UDEV for your network that's changed in Linux, different things like that.
and you'll notice especially on first boot it's a little slow like we saw the other one it kind of just powered up but on the initial load of your machine once you move a linux machine it does do a bit of a detection of all the drivers or excuse me not the drivers but the devices but wasn't too slow got it all booted up i'm all logged in and there you go Good time uh ps aux grip and uh let's do ps aux see there you go nice and simple qcal commands i'll put this back up on screen real quick the first one just make sure that the image is clean that there's no uh, snapshots or missing issues. It says that the drive is not full. Uh, again, before you do the migration from any VMware or Hyper-V or anything like that, you do want to make sure that your image is or your drive is consolidated. That way, there's no existing snapshots or anything, and everything is written down to the actual drive. Then we did a QEM. In, uh, image convert, we converted it to the QCOW2 format, and we did a drive from the test01.vhdx to the QCOW2 um, disk. All right, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, please make sure to hit me down in the comment section. If you're not already and you'd like to be, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to get a notification whenever I post, please hit the bell icon. And also make sure to follow me on all the social media handles of Twitter, uh, Instagram. I'm on a Tumblr. Um, I have my own website, but of the main social media ones, you can find me at, at Ravenhawk Tech. And then other than that, my website, which is Ravenhawk-Tech.com. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed and see you next time. Also, one last thing. If anybody has any additional comments, questions, concerns, uh, topics, or anything, hit me up. I do try to uh, follow everybody, make sure I respond, and take everybody's comments to heart as things for potential uh, future videos and or improvements to my videos. So feel free to leave me any comments that you'd like to see, or any comments for videos you'd like to see, or correct me if I'm wrong, honestly. I will not take offense if somebody corrects me for a mistake I make in the videos. All right, uh, this outro is very long, so I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Bye.